here we are at a very windy and noisy Silverstone. Here we have some of my favourite cars of the weekend, the pre-war sports cars, um, some fantastically engineered machines. We've got um, Alvis and Riley, Alfa Romeo, Bentley, Aston Martin, Bugatti I think was uh, there as well. Um, so many really, really expensive and rare cars. And um, you'll see later on in the in the video, um, thrashing them around, no respect for them whatsoever. Well, it seems to me no respect. Obviously, they do respect them, but they're using them as what they were made for for for, for rating. Um, fantastic! The, most, the handling on them, um, obviously, nothing like a, a modern day car, but. Um, great fun in the dry and uh, this was the first day this was qualifying and as you can see it's very very wet and um, so unfortunately uh, didn't get any video of them the qualifying races uh, but there is plenty of video to come of them thrashing around the track and uh, these just absolutely wonderful wonderful cars um, Bentley Blow, which we'll see shortly, is a four and a half litre supercharged uh, car weighing about three ton, I think it is, something like that. Um, but to see it thrashing down the track is just uh, just wonderful. Um, and you'll see uh, shortly on the video there's Aston Martins. Here we have a few Bentleys, and, uh, amazing, amazing machines. Here's the, uh, no, it's not it. Which one is it, this one here, this is the Bentley blower, and um, probably not, you can't even get to see the engine, just, um, yeah, amazing cars, famous car, but very, very expensive, I wouldn't like to, uh, have to repair that if I put it in the ditch. Another Bentley, regular, normally aspirated, and yet even another Bentley. And here we are, Aston Martins, gorgeous little cars. Sounded fantastic on the uh, on the track, and uh, I dread to think what these things are worth. But uh, you can see beautifully presented ready for racing well prepared and um, I think actually if I remember rightly that one the green Aston Martin actually broke a, dri a, pro a drive shaft and the torque that was going through that back axle must be tremendous and the size of these cars as well you can't believe how big they are they're a big big car big heavy car but uh, fantastically uh, fantastic performance uh, with, yeah hope you enjoy the rest of the video and this is the pre-war sports cars getting ready to go out uh, on the Saturday I believe this was for uh, racing they'd already done the, the qualifying like I said uh, yesterday which was the Friday which was very very wet and uh, anyway I'm going to shut up now so you can listen to these fantastic machines
even though these pre-World War II cars don't seem to be going as fast as some other race cars on the track, the drivers were pushing them to the absolute limit, just about keeping control of the rear end, and you could see them actually leaning out of the cockpits on the bends. It was proper flat-out racing. You're on pool. Hey, Paul. <laughs> hey there, buddy. Yeah. Miss it, you mate. Come back over. Yeah, see you next time. See you soon. We know you like your Formula One. Well, this is Formula One 90 years ago. <laughs> Oh my lord, what a fantastic sound on that car. When your classic car cover is coming up for renewal, try our club scheme arranged with Peter James Insurance. It offers great rates and a range of exclusive benefits including free salvage retention and multi-vehicle options. Just click the link in the description below to get a quote. This is the uh, Formula 2 race cars. Uh, this is the RAC Woodcocks and Sterling Moss Trophy race and they also use these cars in the Formula 2 Junior race um, which are different drivers, obviously younger junior drivers with the same cars. These little cars are, uh, believe it or not, are 4 cylinder, 11 or 1200cc and you can see some of the dri drivers are sat in the middle of the car and some of the drivers are sat at the rear of the car. This is because um, the engines were either in the front of the driver or the rear of the driver. But the later cars were the cars with the engine in the rear. Um, they found it was a better balance, better handling and everything. And of course the modern day Formula One cars are all uh, rear engine and uh, front driver. Really fast, little, the way nothing these little cars. Um, um, really sound sweet. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now because here they come for the start and we'll let you listen to the race. the tourist trophy cars and you can see uh, Jody Kidd in the pink there stood next to Ant Anstead doing a piece to camera um, couldn't hear what they were trying to say I don't, I don't even know whether the camera would be able to hear what they were trying to say they were doing something over the racket but uh, oh, I say racket it's an absolutely awesome sound to me with these fantastic V8s and what have you going by the AC Cobras the Jaguars um, Fantastic, uh, super, super loud and uh, fast cars, and you'll see them shortly coming up doing the racing. Uh, really good commentary. Hope you, uh, hope you enjoy it. Oh, 
it from. Looking here at the board, and it must be Chris on board. Masterminded the transplant of the small 4.2 litre 4289 This is more my era, 70s to 90s touring cars. Some fantastic stuff on there. There's BMWs, Mercedes, there's Alfa Romeos, and of course the British stuff, there's Escorts, Cortinas, two RS3, uh, 3100 Capris, which has sounded fantastic. And of course, my all time favorite, the SD1 V8. The noise is to die for. engines in that Capri RS but it's certainly at no standard Essex V6 so ooh honey it makes me want to clutch my pearls Here we are at a very windy and noisy Silverstone and this is our pitch on one of the main car parks. 
but straight away you have the Vauxhall P uh, C Cresta 3.3 only done 11,000 miles from there next door to it the PA Cresta gorgeous colour follow on from that Ian's Zephyr And then on again is the Brooks Brothers uh, Jag 420. Celebrity Admin Mike Peaks, 1360 Triumph Herald, purple, poppy. On up on Mondeo. And last but definitely not least is Alan Crown's stunning Rover 16, six light special saloon. Uh, he's owned this vehicle since 1969, which has some provenance, and we're very glad he brought it along. This is my personal favourite of all the mini variants. Um, I believe it's called the LAM Convertible, that's L A M, uh, with quite unique paint, uh, the body kit obviously, and inside uh, beautifully trimmed uh, in full leather and uh, walnut dash and door cappings. I think, I think probably about as nice as the mini's ever looked in production, but that's just my opinion. Favourite rally car ever, Audi Quattro. I have to forgive the shadow, it's very sunny here today. Driven by Walter Rawl and Michelle Mouton. What an animal. Esme, I think. Yeah, Esme. Esme and Harry. Taking a shine to your Zephyr, Ian. <laughs> Give us a smile, guys. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. <laughs>